Jen Lask. We are continuing to follow breaking news after reports of looting this afternoon. You saw the videos on our page live here as well. And we are awaiting a press conference from Champaign Mayor Deb Finan. She is just walking up to the podium. Let's listen in. Deb. Okay, so what's gonna happen is the mayor's got a prepared statement she's gonna read. Okay. You're live on it. Uh, then after that, right. we'll open up the chest a few questions. Please. Okay. Okay. And she actually just okay. walked away. She's walking right back over. Just give them a moment there. I'm short. Just... Is this okay? He had this one up here. Should I have left yeah, it? Yeah, he does that. Okay. For the... okay. They are setting up at the podium. Good evening. Earlier today, peaceful community protests regarding the tragic death of George Floyd in Minneapolis last week took a violent turn when groups of individuals began to destroy property and loot from stores at Marketplace Mall and other businesses in Champaign. The concerns and anger that the protesters are expressing are raw and real. In response to the senseless deaths and mistreatment of African Americans from across the country. But this type of unlawful behavior is harmful to all of us. I know that people are angry. They're hurting and sad. But if people continue to express their anger and emotions through rioting, looting, and violent actions, more people are going to get hurt. Doing damage to businesses harms all of us because these businesses provide jobs and the business owners and employees are members of our community. They are our friends, our family, and our neighbors. The concerns of the protesters are understandable, but we need to channel our anger in ways that are productive, not destructive. It is important that as a community, we continue to have these important discussions about race, inequality, and community police relations. To promote community safety, I am implementing a curfew order effective this evening at 8.30 p.m. until 6 o'clock a.m. tomorrow morning. This curfew is not intended to punish our residents, but rather to protect them. I would ask that all members of our community be off the street and not out in public during that time frame. Please stay home while the tensions over today's protests calm down and areas of unrest can be safely and peacefully secured. Real and honest dialogues about race and police community relations are already taking place in Champaign through efforts like the Champaign County Community Coalition. And these discussions have led to positive changes and improvements in transparency and citizen involvement in reviewing the actions of all local law enforcement. We have made advances in these areas and we will continue to do so in a collaborative fashion. Peaceful protests and the continuation of these frank and honest dialogues about our continued need to implement societal changes are the right way to go about this problem, not violent acts of destruction. We are better than that. I will continue to work with all of our residents and our community leaders to work together toward peaceful solutions. And I'm gonna turn it over to Chief Cobb. Good evening, I was asked to come here and just to be available. I'll give you a status update and then I'm available for any particular questions that may come from the media. As far as the status update, uh, Champaign Police Department has requested mutual aid from the Urbana Police Department, uh, Parkland Police Department, University of Illinois Police Department, Champaign County, uh, Sheriff's Office, Illinois State Police, Illinois Conservation Police, and they're all on scene assisting us as we deal 
uh, with some of the civil unrest that we've seen around uh, our North Prospect and Marketplace Mall areas. Officers have been on scene. We initially heard about uh, a social media posting around uh, potential for civil unrest. We had officers, detectives in the area uh, and watched the civil unrest unfold. And it really unfolded rather quickly where individuals exited out of their cars and went directly at businesses to loot. There was no protesting ahead of time. It was more attempt to get into businesses and uh, criminal behavior started. Uh, as officers arrived on scene and started to try to establish some uh, semblance of uh, order, uh, that's when we saw protesters starting to form and start to voice their concern. Um, they were very civil initially with us as we were dealing with things around Marketplace Mall uh, to the point where they were actually having dialogue with several members from the community, uh, supplying water to them, making sure everyone was staying hydrated, uh, and it started out well, and that group dispersed pretty much peacefully on their own. Um, but we've seen several groups um, come together since that time along North Prospect, and we've seen uh, groups who were pretty volatile as far as throwing things at officers and trying uh, to engage officers uh, in com physical confrontations. Uh, so with that said, our officers are out. They're trying to address the issues. We will continue to be out uh, and responding to problems. Um, we're hopeful that this curfew will get all of our great, wonderful people home. We'll encourage um, the bystanders. We had a lot of onlookers that are out looking at what's going on. We're asking that you go home. We're asking that citizens be good, good, good. Uh, witnesses, uh, if they see problems, see something, say something. We need for witnesses to call out uh, license plate numbers. If they're able to get video of individuals doing things that are illegal, please, by all means, capture that information and be able to share it with the police department. We'll get there as quickly as we can. But our biggest hurdle tonight is try to keep everyone safe and try to avoid uh, destruction of even more property within our community. So with that said, I'm open to any questions that the media may have. I only can take a couple before I have to get back. Um, what happens if people are out, out past curfew? They need to be out for some particular reason, whether it be work or if they just decide to be out and about. Well, what happens if they work or they just decide to be out? You want me to? Mayor, if you want to go ahead and cover that. Sure. So the order that was entered provides that um, people may be out, um, particularly if they are news media, if they are, you know, our fire or police officers. People are also allowed to be out for lawful employment, a religious event, treatment for a medical emergency, or an emergency involving the protection of a person or property from any imminent threat of serious bodily injury or substantial damage. And we will provide you a copy of the order. Or tomorrow, for people who are thinking about going out to go shopping, whether it be marketplace or along prospects, will those businesses still be open? Is it, you know, encouraged maybe that people go out and shop or maybe just stay home tomorrow? So um, the order will expire at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So it will be the business's choice as to whether or not um, they are open tomorrow. And I don't know if you want to further answer. No, that is correct. The order is just good for tonight to get us through. Uh, we'll be doing the best we can to get in front of things and hopefully have a good plan, a uh, good response ready for in the morning. Um, and hopefully we can get compliance from our citizens, uh, from our public. If everyone can go home and allow us a chance to assess what's going on, allow us to work with our business community uh, so that we can get things cleaned up. Uh, hopefully we can op reopen tomorrow and see where we're at. Um, but we're asking that uh, those who are involved in the civil unrest go home uh, and allow uh, the curfew to respect the curfew and allow us to um, get things back under control. For business owners and employees who work at these businesses, should they be taking any extra precautions or everything should be, you know, are you guys working with them to figure out what steps they should take? We are working with the business owners. Uh, a lot of them are concerned about their property. Uh, they have employees there. We're working with the ones that have been damaged, trying to make sure they have the assistance they need to make sure we get them secure. Uh, we don't want any more damage to occur to their business. Uh, businesses. We don't want any more looting to occur, so we'll be working and we'll provide extra patrols as best we possibly can to stay in front of that. Uh, we want to make sure it doesn't spread. Uh, we don't want to see issues happen in other parts of our community. That's the reason why we're asking for the public's help and we're asking people to go home. We're asking parents to know where their children are at. We're asking for uh, us to be responsible at this point in time uh, and recognize our community is much better now. We have a lot of great people here and we're asking that they help us and step up and let's get our young people at home and let's get home and let's stop uh, some of the civil unrest we've seen thus far. Chief, 
I, I noticed the the police was very civil even um, amidst the aggression that was meted out to them. Was mm -hmm. this specific instruction? Was there specific instruction given to them that hey, these people are hurting, so um, how are we going to approach this? Please approach it here because I noticed they were very restrained. We've been talking with our officers for days now about the importance of trying not to make this civil unrest to be about the Champaign Police Department. We know people are upset about the national incident that has happened, and we recognize people's First Amendment rights uh, for our freedom of speech, and we recognize people have a right to lawfully protest. But the illegal self-destruction of property, that, that stuff we cannot tolerate, and those are things we're taking our stance on. And when groups come together to protest, uh, we try to allow them to do so as long as they're respectful of the law uh, within reason, right? And when I mean within reason, we know we've had some protesters that entered into the roadway, have done some things that may be illegal and proper, we prefer they not do, uh, and we work with them because we understand the emotional strain that our community is under uh, to some degree. But however, when we start breaking windows, going to stores, taking property, um, that's where we have drawn the line, and we're dealing with that. We have made some arrests, uh, and we will continue to address that type of behavior. Just, you know, I know that there are more protests planned mm -hmm. tomorrow and maybe the day after. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, can, I guess I'm wondering, are you guys expecting more to come? Um, or are you thinking that right now things, you know, you're working on trying to make sure that things are in order for the next couple of days? You know, what can people expect when they decide to come out to these protests, mm -hmm. um, even if they are coming out with peace in mind? I understand that. I, I, I can tell you who are the organizers of the protests. If they're, or if you're organized one, we're trying to work with them. We're asking that they work with us so that we can keep a better handle on who may be part of the protest. If they have people who are having a different message than what the protesters want, how do we identify those individuals and ask that they not be part of this protest? If someone wants to do something illegal, unlawful, and they choose to get together in a group and do something, we'll deal with that group. Uh, I know we've. Through, Few protests I've seen in our community over the last uh, couple of days, they have, they've been peaceful. We've talked with that event organizer who's been planning stuff. They had some stuff planned today. They canceled it when they heard about the potential marketplace mall. They didn't, didn't even want to be associated with it. Uh, so they asked that their representatives and their members not go and be part of that. Uh, we don't know who actively put together this current protest that we're dealing with, their current issues that we're dealing with. That's part of the active investigation as we work through and try to hold individuals accountable for what has occurred. But the short of it is, is that we're trying our best to make sure we uh, keep our community safe, that we get individuals home, and that we work with our business partners to make sure their property is secure, and that we keep our community safe going into the future. Cool. Well, thank you all for your time, and I appreciate it. All right, and for those of you who have just joined in or uh, missed the beginning of that, we do now have a curfew that is being implemented at 8.30 p.m., so less than five minutes from now. That is when the curfew will begin in Champaign. That is supposed to last until 6 a.m. Now, we also want to show you one of the things that we have been following. If we could take a picture right now from our Hollywood liquor store that is over at Green and Neal. Uh, we just saw three officers pulling up over there. Uh, going to look around. We are following the latest updates on what has been happening there and we are continuing to monitor all of the different developments that have happened since three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, one of the things that we have been monitoring as we again have been watching the Hollywood liquor store, we have also been We do know now that Flora Gems has been uh, hit on Kirby Avenue and nothing has been stolen. I'm listening in right now to one of our uh, producers for an update on that, so just bear with me for one moment. Nothing was stolen there, but we do know that vandals did break in there and we are working to get the latest updates on that as well. Uh, we will continue to follow what is going on, but again, Mayor Finan has said that this curfew is beginning in just a few minutes. These are the scenes from earlier today uh, over on Prospect. That's where tear gas was deployed. Our own crew said that they caught a bit of that as well as 
officers were trying to disperse people. You can see they were in riot gear. You can see the truck that they have there for the SWAT truck. Mayor Finan says that this curfew is not intended to punish our residents, but rather to protect them. They are asking the public to not be out on the street and to stay home while the tensions calm down. They say that um, they are hoping that real conversations can continue taking place. They mentioned Champaign County Coalition as a positive thing that has been happening in the community. Uh, Mayor Finan says that has helped make advancements in transparency and citizen involvement. We also heard from Chief Cobb who said that the Champaign Police Department has requested aid from multiple police departments and law enforcement organizations. That includes the Champaign County Sheriff's Office. We saw police from Muhammad earlier this afternoon during one of Paul's live re reports earlier. Illinois State Police have been called Illinois Conservation Police, campus police from the University of Illinois, as well as Parkland College. We also know that there have been multiple instances of looting. Dick's Sporting Goods, we have confirmed, has been broken into. We were there as people were starting to loot Old Navy around 3 o'clock at Marketplace Mall, Sephora and Macy's as well. And Chief Cobb says that officers have been trying to establish some semblance of order. He says that some protesters did try to engage officers in confrontation, but is hopeful that this curfew will bring uh, things to a calmer sense. Now, he is saying if people see something, to say something. Uh, one of our reporters asked that what would happen if people were out past curfew, and Mayor Finan announced that the order that was entered provides that people can be out if they are news media, if they are fire or police, or for their jobs or religious events, treatment for medical emergency, or if there is an imminent threat of substantial damage. And so they are asking anyone else that does not need to be home, again, to leave, go home. This curfew is beginning in just 30 seconds. Um, the order will be expiring at 6 a.m. We asked what would happen in the morning. Would businesses still be open? It will be the businesses' choices whether they choose to open or not. And uh, we are. We also learned during the news conference that uh, police are working with some of the business owners who are concerned about their property. And they're asking people to keep an eye on where their kids are, to recognize, uh, they say, that the community is much better than this. They say that they um, want to support the First Amendment rights, uh, the right to assemble. They say that they are working to make sure that these stay positive and working with the organized protests because we do have other ones that are set for later this week. They are worried, though, about individuals who have been involved with looting and uh, vandalism, as you have been seeing uh, this picture that we are taking from earlier. That's right outside of the Target. Targets across the country have been closing in many large cities as well as our own uh, in Champaign. More than 100 targets have been confirmed to close. There was looting at a target in Minneapolis a few days ago, prompting the start of those closures. And they say that they will continue to pay the employees who are affected by these temporary closures, but they are focused on the safety of the people that work at Target. You can see right now people running out with clothing still on hangers. And we do know at this time that uh, there are more protests forming over at 2nd and Green. We are working to find out the latest updates on what is going on right now. But again, this is a scene from earlier today. Champaign Mayor Deb Finan has announced the curfew just began a minute ago. And anyone that does not need to be outside, they're asking to stay home until 6 a.m. tomorrow. You can see that person uh, grabbing a bunch of clothes, running into that car there. That was from earlier today. This was also from earlier. This scene that you're looking at right now was outside of the Macy's at the mall. You can see protesters talking uh, to some of the different officers there, some people wearing masks, some did not have masks on. Uh, one of the things that Governor Pritzker was saying for any of these uh, demonstrations happening across the state is that if you have been at these demonstrations, they are worried about COVID outbreaks. They're asking people to get tested for COVID-19. So again, you can see some people have masks there. One of the things that we are also seeing are police in riot gear. They have masks on. We saw a SWAT truck pull up there earlier today. These were protests from there. Uh, there have also been 
incidents going on in other cities as well. Uh, one of the things that we do know right now from Springfield, I just want to mention, again, this right now is in Champaign, the video that you're looking at, but we do know that police are monitoring certain locations there. We know they're at the Walmart on 6th Street and um, also at a spot on MacArthur Boulevard. They say they have the entire property at White Oaks Mall shut down. We had been making calls earlier today asking if some of the malls had stayed open, and we know that some of them did stay open for a time, but now that is no longer the case. White Oaks Mall has been shut down. That is an update from our reporter Cole Hankey out in Springfield. But here in Champaign, we are continuing to monitor this curfew that is now in place. Um, again, we mentioned that the jewelers were hit over on Kirby Avenue. They are now boarding up. They hid everything over the weekend, so they say there were no lost items there, but there is vandalism that they will have to deal with. And again, Chief Cobb said that they are working with business owners who are concerned about their property. Now, there have also been road closures that have been put into place in different parts of Champaign. Champaign police were blocking traffic at different points, trying to disperse some of the crowds. And uh, just to run you through some of those, they say that they may have additional closures. Of course, we now have this curfew that is in effect, but some of those spots were Kankakee at Anthony, Prospect at Market View, Neal at Anthony, and Market at Kenyon. You can see in the video that we've got there that tear gas uh, was deployed earlier. Our own crews who were out at the scene caught a bit of that. So if you had been watching us earlier today, you saw Paul Cicchini struggling at times uh, just to continue speaking because of the impact of having that tear gas. Uh, so that is something that they have been using to try and disperse some of these crowds. Now, we also do want to run you through some of the other situations that are happening, particularly in Chicago as well. We do know that more than 300 members of the Illinois National Guard have been deployed there. Governor Pritzker made that announcement earlier after there was widespread looting and damage there. The city has multiple routes to downtown Chicago that have been shut down. Citywide curfew there will be going into effect in about 25 minutes, but here, if you are just joining us in Champaign, that curfew has already been placed in effect here and it will last until 6 a.m. We've had some protesters who have been gathering with signs chanting Black Lives Matter, no justice, no peace. We've also had other people come in and looting. So there have been a lot of different crowds that have been out and about in Champaign today. You see the video right now that was from Gordman's, people running out of a store that they looted. But there have been other protesters who have been peaceful, who have said that what's going on over here in the video that you're seeing right now is damaging to the message that they are trying to get out. And that was something that Chief Cobb touched upon as they were speaking today, again, mentioning that if there are future protests that are going to be planned, they want to be able to work with the protesters to help give them the space to exercise their freedom of speech and their right to assemble. But they do not want to be dealing with what we are seeing at Old Navy, the uh, looting that was going on there. That began around 3 o'clock today at Marketplace Mall. Uh, there had been social media posts telling people that there would be a riot there and calling for people to gather for that. And this is what we saw happen there. Police were on the scene within about 15 minutes of this beginning and forming lines. We saw them uh, in response there. But you can see this was the start of the looting at the Marketplace Mall. Now, uh, we do have more updates that we are continuing to follow in Champaign. Again, uh, those closures that we spoke about. Uh, we also know that the city of Chicago remains on lockdown. As Cole Hankey mentioned with Springfield, there are some areas that police are monitoring right now, but when we were there earlier today, uh, Jamie Mays had been out in Springfield with Cole Hankey, and they were there as more than 1,000 people gathered for protests that remained peaceful there. Uh, most people didn't get out of their cars at all uh, out of safety for COVID-19, and those ones remained peaceful. We know that in Danville, there were also peaceful protests happening there as well. Now. Uh, you want to pause for one moment. We are looking at some of the pictures of buildings getting boarded up. And this is in Chicago. This is in Chicago. And 
Um, again, there was widespread looting and property damage there yesterday. This was recorded earlier today. You can see the aftermath of that looting. A lot of broken glass, a lot of broken boarded up windows. Multiple routes to downtown Chicago have been closed throughout the day. Their curfew beginning in less than 25 minutes now. The Metro there suspending all service tomorrow because of the municipal restrictions and Metro canceled service earlier today as well. The CTA there also suspending their transportation. Again, that curfew begins at nine o'clock there. Multiple Chicago suburbs as well have also been implementing curfews in response to the looting and other activities like that that happened today. Uh, Orland Park, for example, announced a state of emergency. We know some stores on, in the north suburbs in Highland Park have also closed early out, out of precaution. Uh, we know that police in Blue Island have ordered all businesses to be closed by 7 p.m. That's when their curfew goes into effect. Oak Park, Tinley Park, they have curfews as well. And we are continuing to follow the different updates out of Chicago and also in central Illinois. Again, we did have many peaceful protests that we were at earlier today. We have also seen the looting that you've looked at on our videos and that is why there is a curfew that is now in effect until 6 a.m. tomorrow in Champaign County and we will have more updates tonight starting at 9 o'clock on WCIX and also at 10 o'clock on WCIA 3 News. Thank you for watching.